Eritrea. Information about the country. History. In spring 1993, Eritrea held a plebiscite to decide on its future. The result was that the former 14th province of Ethiopia broke away from its neighbor Ethiopia to become an independent state after 31 years of annexation and many years of war during which the province fought for its freedom and in which more than 200,000 people lost their lives. The borders of the small state on the Red Sea, which has a land cover of 1 to 1,144 square kilometers, had already been fixed by the Italian colonial rulers in 1890. Eritrea territory also played a host to parts of the Axum Empire. When the latter collapsed in the 10th century, the Beja a Hamitic people took control of the region. As of the 16th century, control of the coastal region changed hands several times. As the Turk Ottoman Empire began to expand, the Turks won control of the region. By the 19th century, the Egyptians started to spread southward and the Ethiopians northward, both in the direction of Eritrea. In 1869, the Italian Rubanito Shipping Company brought the coastal town of Asab, enabling the Italians to push northward until they were halted by Ethiopian forces. They were defeated by the Emperor Menelik II at Adowa in 1896, although Eritrea remained under Italian control. Eritrea's geographical position on the Red Sea and of course close to the Suez Canal was of strategic significance to every, every occupying force. 51 years of Italian colonial rule were characterized by the destruction of social structures, the exploitation of both people and land, and a general exploration of the natives' lands. In 1941, Eritrea was liberated from the chains of the Italian fascism by the Allied forces and was consequently governed by Great Britain. British administration of Eritrea was fairly liberal as was made evident by the establishment of trade unions, political parties and a free press. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the Allies could not decide on the future of Eritrea. Between 1945 and 1952, Eritrea remained under British administration, although subject to UN control in 1952, the United Nations decreed that Eritrea was to be federated with Ethiopia. This led to a clash between two striking different systems. Eritrea was relatively liberal, whilst Ethiopia's feudalism system was headed by an orthodox Christian empire. Ethiopia proceeded to exploit the federation and declared Eritrea the 14th province in November 1962. Neither the United Nations nor any of the wars nations interfered with Ethiopia's plans. Over the course of the following 30 years, between 1961 and 1991, Eritrea fought Africa's strongest and most powerful army, which was supported by the USA until 1977 and then by the former Soviet Union. By the late 1980s, Eritrea's army's efforts were beginning to bear fruit. The Eritrean People's Liberation Front, that is the EPLF, 
played a decisive role in this fight for freedom. In 1991, Ethiopia's head of state, that is Mengishu, fled to Ethiopia. Sorry, I mean Mengishu fled to Zimbabwe. EPLF were able to be to benefit from the from this and then at the end of the Cold War, capturing the towns of Asmara and Asab in May 1991 and forming an interim government. Following the plebiscite, which led to the independence, the Republic of Eritrea was proclaimed on May 24, 1993. Two months later, Isaias Afewaki, Eritrea's first president, and his Ethiopian counterpart, Melazi Nawi, signed a cooperation agreement paving the way for economic, social, and political cooperation between the two states. Politics. In spring 1994, work began to prepare the first constitution of the Republic of Eritrea. The Provisional Parliament, the National Assembly, consists of 164 members. In 1994, the former liberation organization, that is the EPLF, regrouped as a political party, the People's Front for Democracy and Justice, that is the PFDJ. Today, it is the governing party with one of four seats. For administrative purposes, Eritrea is divided into 10 regions, each with its own regional parliament. People. Eritrea has a population of approximately 3.5 million people who can be divided into nine major ethnic groupings. Some 45% of the inhabitants are Tigrians, 30% are Tigris, 12% are Biles, whilst 8% are Afar, Saho, Hedareb, Nara, Kunama, and Rashaida peoples. Some 750,000 people fled the country during the war with Ethiopia, mostly to the Sudan. Otherwise, many Eritreans live in the Europe, Arabia, and America. The Federal Republic of Germany was the first country to initiate a return program to provide for former refugees with financial support. This situation is difficult, however, as many find themselves homeless and unemployed. Education The EPLF attached particular importance to education even during the war. Throughout this period, schools continued to teach circumstances permitting. The structure of the Eritrean school system is as follows. After one and a half years at nursery school, that is attendance of which begins at three years of age, children attend primary school for five years. This is followed by three years at a middle school or secondary school. They may subsequently continue with education at a technical college. Children are taught in their native regional language and in English to enable them to attend an institute of further education or a university at a later stage. A particular curriculum is very important, and many schools have their own market garden, bakery, and a joiner's workshop. Asmara is home to Eritrea's only university. As some 80% of adults are illiterate, particular emphasis has been placed on adult education programs. Religion. The population is divided more or less equally into Christians, that is, 95% of, of whom are Orthodox Eritrean Christians and Sunni Muslims. There has been no conflict between the two groups. Moreover, 
There are many followers of natural religion, that is animism, which may also belong to one of the two major faiths. It's also not usual for Christians or Islamic elements of the religion to combine with African traditions. Eritrea is inhabited by nine ethnic groups, each which has its own language and way of life. The following examples illustrate the differences between these people. For the nomadic Afar people, it is extremely important to own working animals, such as camels. Afar women wear nothing but a long wrap of a skirt. This is supplemented by a black transparent veil, which is draped over their head and shoulders after they marry. They decorate their bodies with jewelry, tattoos, and scars. The men do the same, although they also have their incisors filed. The Baya live in the north of Eritrea and are also a nomadic people. They are particularly striking on account of their delicate facial features. The principal characteristic of bear men is their Afro hairstyle. Mud is used to hold the curls in place. The Rashaida are a Sunni people, which deal in a camel trade. They are believed to have originated in Saudi Arabia or in the Yemen. They still trade with these countries today, particularly in perfume and jewelry for women. Rashaidas are Orthodox Muslims. Married women wear material masks decorated with gold and silver which cover their body and below their hips. They begin to collect jewels for their wedding when they are still very young. In fact, they often wear so much jewelry that they barely move. Rashaidas intermarry enabling them to retain their own identity. The war with Ethiopia has led to certain social changes, particularly concerning the role of women in society. Islamic and Orthodox Christian traditions dictate that women have a few rights. Or I mean dictate that me women have few rights. The EPLF gave Eritrean women their first opportunity to assume typically male functions, for example, as mechanics or mi military commanders. As a result, the women have become more self-confident, although it, is still, it will still take a long time until they enjoy the same equal opportunity rights as Western women. Practical Travel Tips The fight for freedom has brought the Eritreans together and instilled them with strong sense of solidarity. They have gained self-confidence, having had to be self-reliant and very little external support in their fight for freedom from Ethiopia. This self-awareness is, for instance, reflected in their rejection of bribery. It is very important that a visitor to Eritrea does not consider the country to be an appendage of Ethiopia. Eritrea should be seen for what it has officially been since 1993, namely an independent state. Religion also determines the code of conduct for the followers of each faith, particularly in rural religions. As roughly half of the population is Muslim, the rules of the Quran are binding to these people. These rules are described in detail in the practical travel tips. The tips which follow do apply to dealings with Eritrean Christians, younger people, and business partners, most of whom are familiar with Western behavior. Forms of address and titles. 
Eritreans address one another by the title Ato, that is Mr. and Waisero, that is Mrs., followed by their corresponding Christian name. This also applies to situations involving sense, uh, sense uh, I, I mean sense, senior, I mean senior business partners. Surnames are less important. If one does not know an Eritrean's name, sir and madam, are quite sufficient. Greeting. Eritreans often greet one another with a handshake where, whereby their right shoulders will touch. Friends of the same sex greet one another with kisses and on the cheeks as is in Italy. It is customary to greet a stranger with a gentle handshake, gestures, etiquette, and taboos. Eritreans know the majority of European gestures and rules of behavior. It is impolite to point at people or at objects. If one has no choice but to point, the whole hand should be used. Before entering a church or mosque, it is essential to remove one's shoes. The left hand is considered unclean in Eritrea. For this reason, it should not be used when passing or handling things to others, nor when receiving something from another person. Food and drink. Eritreans are generally familiar with Western eating habits. Muslims, however, are not allowed to consume certain foods or drinks such as pork or alcohol. Conversation. Eritreans enjoy talking about most general topics or about the history of their country. However, one should only ask about personal matters if the Eritreans is the first to approach the subject. Short phrases for everyday situations. Nine languages are spoken in Eritrea. Afar, Arabic that is the Rashaida, Bilen, Kunama, Nara, Saho, Tigre, Tigrinya, and Tobedawi, that is the Hedareb. Tigrinya is usually spoken in government departments, whilst business and education are conducted in English. English, Arabic, and Italian are widely understood and often spoken as a second language. Several short phrases in Tigrinya. Good morning. The handle Hadir Kum. Good morning. The handle Hadir Kum. Good day. The handle Voil Kum. Good evening. The handle Amsikum. Thank you. Yekenjele. You are welcome. Genzeb Kum. Goodbye, Dehan Kunu. Welcome, Bedehau Mizu. Typical Eritrean's cuisine is very spicy. The main dish, that is the Tizigni, is a very spicy beef dish. Restaurants in the larger towns frequently serve Italian cuisines, such as various pasta dishes, even in Eritrea, a typical Italian consist. I mean, a typical Italian meal consists of several courses. Seafood is also popular in Eritrea. The freshest fish is, of course, available in coastal towns such as in Port of Masawa. Delicious exotic fruit juices are available everywhere. Tea and espresso 
and are generally served black and uh, with plenty of sugar in some regions, coffee is prepared with ginger or black pepper. The local beer is called Suwa and cannot be compared to Western beers. Restaurants. When in Eritrea, it is wise to observe the usual health precautions for tropical countries. For instance, ice cubes are best avoided as a raw salads. Meat and poultry should only be eaten if well cooked. It is advisable to drink only boiled water or boiled mineral water and other boiled drinks or bottled. Most restaurants are part of one of the larger hotels. The following list of larger hotels in Asmara. Salam, Ambasoira, Bologna, Hamasien, N, Expo, and also Nyala with a spectacular view of the city from the roof. Hanet Street, Asmara's main street, is the location of many cafes and smaller restaurants. Sightseeing. In 1897, the Italians chose Asmara instead of the port of Masawa as the capital of their colony and until the outbreak of civil war, the city flourished as a prosperous trading center. Avenues, cafes, and parks which are shaded by large palms still afford Asmara, a certain Italian flair today. Eritrea's capital, which stands 2,300 meters above sea level in the central highlands, has 3,500 Hundred or I mean three fifty thousand sorry in husband inhabitants. Asmara has the following sites to offer visitors. Important public buildings such as the government and administration building, the town council, the Ministry of Education, the Central Bank and the High Court are to be located on the Hanet Street. Asmara's main street. The main mosque, Kulafa in Rashidin, was built in 1937. The Catholic Church on Hanet Street was constructed in 1922. Its Gothic tower as a, is a major attraction to the city skyline. In the Mariam, the main Orthodox church was constructed between 1917 and 1920. Gibi was the former palace and residence of various colonial rulers and now houses the National Museum, built in 1897 and reopened in 1991. The archaeological museum contains exhibits from the Axum Empire. Excursions. Eritrea offers a wide variety of sceneries. The central highlands, the coastal plains on the Red Sea, rugged mountains in the north, steepest farmlands in the lowlands, the Darkins Desert and the Phil, Phil region, which bears great similarity to the Black Forest as, as such. A visit to Eritrea will always be an impressive experience. Buses connect Asmara with other towns in Eritrea. Of course, an organized tour is more comfortable and less problematic, but the local bus enables visitors to get to know the country and its people even better. The Eritrean Tour Services, that is the ETS, organizes city tours and excursions. The agency also arranges car rentals. The road from Asmara to the port of Masawa, that is 110 kilometers northeast of the capital, offer many spectacular panoramic, panoramic scenes along 
its twists and turns, and it winds down mountainous gullies from an altitude of 2,300 meters to the coast. The road also takes one past Debrain Bizen, or Debre Bizen, a Eritrea's famous Orthodox monastery. Masawa consists of the islands of uh, Batsa and uh, Toilet, as well as part of the mainland. All three parts are connected uh, by a dam. The city is stark contrast to Asmara. Whilst the capital has been marked by the Italian pasts, two core Egyptian characteristics have left their mark in, on Masawa. Although the city was heavily bombed in 1991, the Islamic past is still very much present in the center of Masawa, which is located on the island of Batsa. Some 100 kilometers away in the Red Sea is the Dahlak Archipelago, consisting of about 200 islands. The islands are surrounded by coral reefs and magnificent underwater life. Other interesting excursions destinations including Karen, the capital of the province of Senehit, famous for its charming scenery and ancient monasteries, churches and mosques and barca in the western lowlands. The latter is best known for its well-preserved Tuko Egyptian architecture. Cultural highlights. Asmara Theater was built in 1819. It is located on Hanet Street. Shopping. Popular souvenirs from Eritrea include baskets, pottery, wood carvings, tradition Eritrean coffee pots, leather goods, handmade jackets and shoes, spices, gold and silver jewelry near the main mosque. Asmara's colorful central market north of the Catholic Cathedral is the place to go for typical African products. As the market is very large, it is divided into sections according to the products. In Asmara, shops are open between 8 a.m. and 12 noon and again between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m from Monday to Friday. On Saturdays, they are open 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. Public holidays. The dates and many religious public holidays, particularly Muslim holidays, are announced on the radio on day in advance. However, most shops are open in the afternoon on public holidays. January 1st, New Year's Day. January 7th, Orthodox Christmas. January, Timkat, the baptism of Christ in the River Jordan. Spring, Eid al Fitr, to mark the end of Ramadan. Spring, Fasika, that is the Easter. May 24th, May 24th, I mean, Liberation and Independence Day, National Day. June 20th, Matthias Day. Summer, Eid al Adha. September 1st, start of the Ahmad struggle. Autumn, Eid Milaid al Nabi. September, Mascal finding of true cross. September 11th, Orthodox New Year. December 25th, Christmas. All visitors to Eritrea require a visa. It is advisable to apply for a visa at an Eritrean embassy in plenty 
time before one's journey. A valid passport valid for a further six months. A photograph and a DM-90 should be enclosed with the application. This applies to applications made to the embassy in Germany. Applications are processed in approximately one week. It is advisable to pack medicine and toiletries for personal use, as some articles are not available in Eritrea. For instance, tampons and contact lenses solution. Temperatures in the highlands can sometimes fall to freezing point in the winter months, that is December, January, and February. Otherwise, temperatures between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius are normal. During the summer, the mercury can rise at 40 degrees Celsius in coastal areas. It is not unusual for temperatures to fall by 20 degrees within the space of one day. The rainy season in the highlands is from June and until September and on the coast from December to March. The best time to visit Eritrea is between September and June. For everyone intending to visit the highlands, warmer clothing will be necessary. Wheels light cotton clothing and bathing attire are advisable for the coastal regions where it tends to be hot and humid. It is wise to pack a pullover, even for a visit during the summer months as the evenings can be very cool. Moreover, one should always pack enough sunscreen and not forget one's sunglasses and a sun hat due to the altitude in the highlands. One can burn very quickly in the sun. As Asmara stands at an altitude of 2,300 meters above sea level, a malaria prophylactic is not necessary as long as one stays in the city. However, anyone planning to embark on an excursion to another part of Eritrea is best advised to take precautions against malaria. Eritrea does not yet have its own currency. It, in the highlands and in the southern coastal regions, the Ethiopian beer is used. In the western lowlands and northern coastal regions, the currency tends to be Sudanese pound. Hotel bills must be paid in western currency, that is the U.S. dollars, are always appreciated. And 10% tip is customary.